Well, here you are. I've been waiting for you. How are you this week, second graders? I know you're all excited about making your first reconciliation, and I know that you've been practicing your prayers. Am I right? I hope so. Now, we are going to talk about reconciliation today, but we're not going to use a book. We're going to, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures and we're going to talk about what it means and a little bit more about how you receive reconciliation. Now, we have two pictures to look at. One is marked reconciliation, and the other one doesn't have any words on it, but I'm going to explain them to you. The first one shows the priest and somebody who's going to confession. This is what you call face-to-face, -face, when you just sit down in two chairs and you, you speak directly to the priest and tell him your sins. I like that best because I, I like to be up front and be able to see the priest as I talk to him. Now, the next picture, this is the one that I kind of have told you about. This is a picture of a boy in the confessional. That's the little booth in the back of the church, the confessional. And he's speaking through the grill. Do you see like where the little X's are? And he's speaking to the priest. But behind the priest, we see the image of Jesus. I told you that when you talk to the priest, it's like you're saying these words directly to Jesus because he hears them. The priest is there acting in the place of Jesus when we go to confession or we make what we call our first reconciliation or our first penance, okay? So, in your lifetime, you will do both of these ways of receiving the sacrament, okay? Because reconciliation or penance or confession are sacraments that you receive over and over and over throughout your life. Yes. And it's a wonderful sacrament, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about that. But anyhow, we have these two pictures so that you can think of different ways that you receive the sacrament, face-to-face -face or in the confessional. And remember, Jesus hears your words whichever way you wind up receiving. Now, I've got something here. 
a little bit for moms and dads, okay? It says, what is the sacrament of reconciliation? The sacrament of reconciliation is known by various names, including confession, penance, and the sacrament of forgiveness. No matter the name, the sacrament focuses on our need to be healed so that we can experience a restored relationship with God and with our neighbors. See, when we've got sins on our soul, our relationship with God is kind of broken. But when we go to confess our sins, our relationship can be healed. Now, underneath here, it says for kids, the sacrament of reconciliation is the way to make things new and fresh and pure again. It's like giving our souls a really good bath and washing away impurities. Well, the impurities are sins, okay? We confess, that means we tell our sins to the priest who is there taking the place of Jesus. The priest listens to our confession but he can never tell anyone else our sins. Did you know that? You know, even if mommy went right up and said, what did my son say? The priest cannot tell. That's called the seal of the confessional. All right? He gives us prayers or actions to do, which are called penance. The priest absolves us of our sins. Absolves means forgives because he has the power that has been passed down from Jesus himself. We say or do our penance and we have received forgiveness. All right. This one says, what do you need to do to make a good confession? Number one, you need to examine your conscience. We talked about that a lot last week. That's when you have to sit down quietly, maybe on your, bre- your bed, maybe in the corner of the living room, or at the kitchen table when nobody's around, and really think. It says, think about the things you have done wrong that disappoint God. You need to be truly sorry for those things and promise to do better. And I told you last week, you can't go in and say, oh, I hit my sister seven times and pretend that you're sorry. No, because that would be a lie for one thing. But you have to tell the truth And you have to mean it. And you have to truly be sorry. And you need to promise to do better. Okay? You need to memorize the act of contrition and the bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my first confession. Now, we practice that just a little tiny bit. And we need to practice it lots of times. When we're in the confessional, We make the sign of the cross and we say these words, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my first confession. Now you need to do that at home with mom or grandma or some other grown-up. And you need to do it a lot because you really have to memorize that. Let's do it again. Bless me, Father, For I have sinned. This is my first confession. Now, underneath here, I've written out the act of contrition. And if you remember, you have that in your book. I told you where it was last week, and I told you you need to practice that. Okay? This is the act of contrition. My God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart in choosing to do wrong 
and failing to do good, I have sinned against you, whom I should love above all things. I firmly intend, with your help, to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Now, I really need you to practice that in your book every day because I told you that's the only way you memorize things if you practice it every day. All right, the next thing that we have here is, again, I've written this out. I had this paper. I used it last year, but I'm putting it in here because it's important. It says you need to memorize. Now, memorize means you put it in your brain and it's there. You need to memorize these words, which you say as you make the sign of the cross when you are ready to tell your sins to the priest. And again, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my first confession. Okay? And after you tell your sins to the priest and you're forgiven, you'll go up to the front of the church and kneel at the altar rail in front of the tabernacle. Remember that's Jesus' little house? The tabernacle? And you say your penance. Now, this is something I want to share with you. It says, after I make my confession, I will feel so good. It will make me feel free because my sins will be forgiven. I'll feel like jumping for joy. I love God and God loves me. Isn't that wonderful? It's like a big weight has been lifted off your back. And it just it makes you feel so good so happy. Now, I have the um, page number for, for your book where the act of contrition is, and that is going to be your homework this week. I want you to continue practicing the act of contrition and the Bless Me Father. And the act of contrition is on page 237 in your book. Okay, Christ in us. You've been really good, and I thank you for coming today. I want you to really think about all of these steps to making your first reconciliation. It's a wonderful, wonderful sacrament, and you're so fortunate that you can receive it over and over all your life. So I'm I just want to say goodbye, and God bless you, and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.